It's good to see you today. Hope you're having a good day. Come on with us to the Gospel of Matthew in the New Testament today. We're going to be looking at the account of the, par the parable of the workers in the vineyard. In Matthew chapter 20, we're going to have to read a little bit. Come along and let's read it together. In Matthew chapter 20, starting at verse 1. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. Now when he had agreed with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and whatever is right I will give you. So they went. Again he went out about the sixth hour and the ninth hour and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle and said to them, Why have you been standing here idle all day? And they said to him, Because no one has hired us, because no one hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and whatever is right you will receive. So when evening had come, the owner of the vineyard said to the steward, Call the laborers and give them their wages, beginning with the last to the first. And when those who came were hired about the eleventh hour, they each received a denarius. But when the first came, they supposed that they would receive more, and they likewise received each a denarius. And when they had received it, they complained against the landowner, saying, These last men have worked only one hour, and you made them equal to us, who have borne the burden and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what is yours and go your way. I wish to give this last man the same as to you. It is, not, is it not lawful for me to do what I wish with my own things? Or is your eye evil because I am good? So the last will be first and the first last. For many are called, but few chosen. So, Concerning this parable, I want you to think about some some applications, but I also want you to look at it in the context. I think in the context, it's pretty interesting. But concerning this passage, when we, we talk about it in Bible class and things like that, um, and we ask basically, what's the point? And one of the first things that people often say is, well, it's talking about those who obey later on in life. And that may be an application of this passage, to think about those who start working early and then those who come along, um, those who come along later, and they both, receive, they both receive the same wages. Certainly it is true. If we obey, if we obey as a young child, if we obey when we're very young, if we obey the gospel when we're very young, does that mean that we have more of a reward in heaven compared to those who may obey when they are elderly? The answer is simply no. That the reward, which is in the Lord's hands, by the way, um, it's the Lord's to give, we, we simply look forward to heaven with Jesus and with the Father and with the saints and the Spirit. Um, the, it, this is not Dante's Inferno where there's seven circles of hell. There aren't seven circles of heaven and if you obey early on in life, you get higher up the rung, higher up on the ladder. That's not what this is. We are there together. We are there in fellowship regardless of when we begin to work for the Lord of Harvest. Um, but that may, be, that may be an application. But I'm not sure about the context. Within the context, and you might look, hopefully your Bible's open. If not, just um, listen as I, as I look at it. What what it is that directly precedes this, um, and actually we'll get to we'll get there here in a second. But I'll I'll go and say it. what directly comes before this is the account of the rich young ruler, and actually it all looks like it's part of the same conversation. The rich young ruler comes to Jesus. This is Matthew chapter twenty, so this is very late in Jesus's ministry. Okay, we are only to think about it. Matthew chapter 21 is Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. That's how late we are. Okay, so we are, at the, we are at the threshold of going to Calvary. Now, remember what Jesus said to the rich young ruler, right? Back in Matthew chapter 19, he says, If you want to be perfect, go sell what you have and give to the poor, and you'll have treasure in heaven. Come and follow me. Of course, the young man went away sorrowful. Um, went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. We'll come back to that here in a second, though. That's the context. 
So, to look in Matthew 20, yes, it's true that those who obey later in life share in the same reward as those who obey younger life. That's certainly true. As an application, that may fit the parable. But you might also think about, within the context of, or, or perhaps not even the context, to think about the idea overall. I want you to think about the Jews and the Gentiles. As you have the Jews, of course, the gospel is going to them first. Acts chapter 2, they're all Jews who are obeying the gospel. It's not until we get to Cornelius that Gentiles start being added to the kingdom. Well, how are the Jews, how are the Jewish Christians going to feel about those Johnny-come-latelys? And to think about just the concept in general, the Jews have been the chosen people of God ever since Abraham was called and had the sign of circumcision, right? Ever since then, he, there's, he's the father of the faithful. How are they going to feel about Gentiles coming into the kingdom? How are they going to feel about the later workers? That may be an application here. And I, I would suggest that may be closer to the context, perhaps. But, but I think even more looking at the context, you might think about the apostles and the rich young ruler. We've already considered the, the, the conversation Jesus has with the rich young ruler and, and recognize what he says. Jesus says, come follow me. Well, how much longer is the Lord's ministry going to last? Okay, he, he did not tell very many people to literally come follow him. A lot of people did follow him. But not everybody was an apostle. Not everybody left their fishing nets and followed him. Not everybody left the table as they were collecting taxes and followed him. Not everybody did that. Very few people did that. He told very few people. Consider um, the demon-possessed man who literally wanted to follow him. And Jesus actually forbids him and says, Go home and tell your family and friends what the Lord has done. Go home. He doesn't tell very many people to literally follow him, but the rich young ruler was one of them. Well, after Jesus tells the rich young ruler to do that, he has a conversation with the apostles. And it's Peter who says, We've left all and followed you, therefore what shall we have? Do you see how this lays the groundwork for the parable of the workers in the vineyard? Peter says, We've, we've left all and followed you, and guess what? We did it three years ago. Now, what do, what do we have? What is our reward? Now, the Lord does say, Assuredly, I say to you, this is chapter 19, verse 28, that in, the re, that in the regeneration, when the Son of Man sits on the throne of his glory, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And certainly, that is the case. But Peter effectively says, "Where's what reward are we going to have? Do you see how, how similar that sounds to the early workers? They thought that they deserved more. They thought they deserved more. Now, I want you to think about the apostles who had been following for three years and had left everything. How would they feel if the rich young ruler followed Jesus? And he's only going to have to follow him for a few days, literally. You might consider it. You might really think, though, also about, because that is, the, that is literally the context of the parables of the workers in the vineyard. He's talking to the disciples, it looks like. I want you to think about a question. How do you think the apostles, okay, we're talking about the apostles, how do you think they are going to feel about the one who is going to be born out of due time? How do you think they are going to feel about Paul, the apostle? Pardon the phrase, the Johnny come lately, the one born out of due time. You don't think they're going to have to mentally get their minds wrapped around that and get their hearts wrapped around that? You might consider it because that's... The early and the later workers, he's he's addressing um, the disciples as they had been as he had been dealing with the rich young ruler. You might think about it. Overall, I think the parable is to to think of topically what it's about. It is about work. 
the Lord is work, looking for workers, might consider. Um, I knew an old fellow one time in Arkansas, and he said, if you ever want something done, ask someone who's busy. That's a pretty good quote. The Lord's looking for workers. Of course, the parable is also about grace. We recognize that as well. The early workers, had they had been bearing the heat of the day. The later workers, not so much, but they still, they, they got um, what the Lord gave them. And to that, I think that is, that is one of the more important points. The Lord gave them what they agreed upon, the early workers. The later workers effectively said, um, whatever, whatever the Lord says, whatever's right, I'll give you. There's an agreement there. And of course, it's also about animosity. As the early workers started complaining, so we might need to consider that. It's never a good idea to grumble. It's an even worse idea to grumble against the Lord. Usually doesn't turn out too well. But that's a little bit about the workers in the vineyard. I appreciate you tuning in. Appreciate you studying along with us. I hope you think I hope you think more about the parable. It's it's an interesting one, especially when we back up and look at the forest rather than the individual trees. But I hope this brief study has been beneficial to you. Hope you have a good day. Hope you tune in tomorrow for another brief look into God's Word. Thanks for being with us today.